Today, uh, I've been giving uh, the topic uh, about the second angel's message. Uh, I have to tell you, my brethren, that uh, I have an evangelistic campaign on the three angels' messages, and it's uh, for six days. It's for six days, and I only got half an hour today. So, uh, it is a hard work uh, for me today just to, to summarize uh, some very uh, important things about uh, the second angel's messages, uh, because I'm saying messages because there are so many messages in the uh, second angel's uh, messages, uh, because God wants us to be prepared beforehand because he doesn't want any one of us to be surprised uh, and at the other hand the bible is saying everything about the last day's events let's just pray oh lord and heavenly father we thank you for your holy spirit we thank you that uh, you were calling us today to your house uh, please open our hearts, our minds, so that we can see your will uh, to uh, the church and in our personal life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of, fornic of her fornication. Revelations 14, verse 8. This is the second angel's message. And this message uh, has to be in the middle of the heart of the people of God. Why? Because this message contains very important things that we all have to have in our lives. I'm saying in our lives not only in our mouth why because your life is the greatest one of the greatest preacher your life is one of the greatest preacher because uh, whatever you live you believe in whatever you have in your life is the guidance of your life god wants you today just to draw nearer to him, to his word, and to just listen, and to just put in practice in your daily lives. The Bible is speaking about a great city. Uh, please raise your hands if you have heard something about Babylon, about the ancient Babylon. What do you know about the ancient Babylon? It was the greatest empire in its time. Its first king was King Nebuchadnezzar. It had three kings, and uh, God symbolizes uh, this kingdom. Uh, I mean, all the kingdoms of the earth are symbolized by a statue with different kind of of uh, yeah of, of things uh, and it begins with gold and then silver and then brass and then iron and then iron mixed with clay when we are talking about babylon uh, we see that babylon is the gold the golden age why can we say that babylon was the golden age because uh, their currency, their money, was uh, was was golden, was gold. Uh, if you wanted to buy something, you had had to have uh, some gold. And not only this, uh, that time was a very prosperous time, and God had blessed Nebuchadnezzar. Why? Because he began uh, at. In the beginning, he had so many false, uh, unreal gods, 
but when he met the real God for the fourth, fourth time, because uh, for the first time he was just uh, believing something like us, some of us, and then the th second time more, then the third time more, and at the fourth time he you can read it in chapter 4 of the uh, book of Daniel. Uh, he is proclaiming with loud voice, with living voices, that the God of Daniel is the only God. This is the best part of Babylon. The Babylon is mentioned even uh, in the New Testament but it is not with a positive uh, thing. It is mentioned like a woman with her fornication. With her fornication. If you remember, or if you have studied uh, about Babylon, uh, about the ancient Babylon, you, you can see that Babylon... Uh, had a lot of nation in itself, a lot of nations in itself, different kind of people. And Babylon is and was famous about its uh, attitude uh, towards people because they didn't want to con conquer the religion that people had. You can remember this uh, about Rome and Greece as well because they didn't want to do that. But they, they had uh, so many religions, so many denominations, and so many gods. And whenever you read about Babylon with a Christian eye, uh, you will see that Babylon was a chaotic place. Although it was a very rich place by materials or materialistic way uh, but uh, their main uh, although there were so many thousands of gods their main god was Baal Marduk and uh, all the kings had to to just bow down bow down before Baal Marduk and on the first day of the year they had to give hand with with that statue uh, or with that imagine about Baal Marduk because that meant that uh, if they are uh, not doing this they don't have the authority to be a king let's just translate it to our days what is uh, what does Babylon give to all nations what did Babylon give to all nations? Uh, they were patient with all the nations uh, in, a, in an exact measure. But when it was about their personal God, they were expecting every nation to just obey their God. Why? Because Baal Marduk was their main god. If you translate it uh, for today's language, you will see that just as Babylon tried to unite the nations in one uh, country or in one empire, today's Babylon is trying the same thing. Today's Babylon is trying the same thing. And there is a very, very good uh, comparison uh, about Babylon. Babylon wasn't only full of uh, fornications or chaotic things. There was a Daniel, there was a Sidrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We know about these three, uh, I mean, about these uh, uh, four men, uh, faithful men. Their life was shining to everyone. Daniel's life was, was a shine, a light from God. 
Why can we say this? Daniel was serving so many kings because he wasn't only serving Babylonian kings, he was serving the Persians as well. And there were a few, quite a few kings and rulers. And nearly all of them, I'm saying nearly, except of one, were converted to the Lord. Were converted to the Lord. They were believing more and more in the Lord, and they were forgetting Baal Marduk, their own God, their nation's God. Today's Babylon is offering a lot of deities as well. And please don't just think about uh, Holy or Saint Mary or Saint Anthony or others. There are gods in your family and in my family as well. Your treasure. Jesus is saying where your treasure is, there is your heart. Will be there, your heart. If you love more your kids, your children than your God, you have an idol, you have a God, a false God. If you love your car, your money, your husband, your wife, your whatever, more than the God of Daniel and then God of Nebuchadnezzar, the living God, the creator, the living and only God of the universe, then you are in an idolatry, idolatry. God is calling us today for something special. It's saying that there was an angel. There were three angels, but it is uh, today about the second angel. And it's saying, and another angel followed the first angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. There is um, a very good uh, thing in <clears throat> In, uh, in the Hebrew, in the old Hebrew language, when the old Hebrew language is repeating something, it's, it is emphasizing that there is something very important. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. It means that Babylon is surely, there is no doubt, it is fallen. Why? Because Although we can see there are so many gods, but Babylon is godless. There is no God. There is no God. What is there instead of God? In the great city, there are so many nations. There is fornication. There is wine. There is everything but not God. Although the Christian world is uh, prospering and Christian people are more and more in numbers with the name, but those people with full heart are less and less, lesser and lesser. There is a question in my mind, and please think of this question. Where are the true Christians? Where are the true God followers today? There was in the ancient Babylon, four men interceding for all the empire of Babylon. Although they knew that they are not able to make all the empire to be converted to the real, to the living God, but they were on their knees. They were praying. They were always interceding, even though they were in the fiery furnace, they were in the lion's den, they were captivated, but they haven't forgotten about their personal God. Babylon, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. 
what caused Babylon to be fallen? By the way, I tell you, Babylon is not yet fallen because the time has not yet come. If I would have enough time, I would uh, uh, show you the prophecies in the Bible which are saying uh, exactly when Babylon is going to be fallen. But let's just uh, uh, understand some more things about uh, uh, Babylon. Why is Babylon fallen? Because Babylon is corrupt. Because Babylon could be bought with money, with power and pride. Why is Babylon fallen? I have something against you, says the book of Revelation. You didn't keep the good thing that was with you, in you. My brethren, we have to keep the good faith. We have to fight the good fight that God was giving to us. I don't mean that we have to have the weapons that can kill people. I don't kill that we have to have the chemical uh, weapons that can uh, kill millions and billions of people, but we have to have the weapon of the word of God, not in our hands. That's not enough. Yes, in our hands as well, but it is not enough. I hid thy word in my heart. Please continue. So that I cannot sin against thee. Psalm 119, verse 15 is saying this. My brethren, if you want to do something that is uh, uh, relevant today as a real Christian, or I should say as a real follower of Christ, hide the Word of God in your heart. Why? Because Babylon is a very chaotic place. Babylon was always a very chaotic place with so many teachings, with so many teachers, with so many so-called Bibles, false Bibles. But there is only one Word of God, the true Bible, the true Word of God. And the Word made flesh, and we beheld His glory as the glory of the Father who was dwelling among people, among men. John chapter 1, verse 14. Who is that word? Is it Jesus? Is it Jesus in your life, that word? I tell you, my friends, my brothers, if there is no Jesus, your personal God in your life, you are fallen with Babylon. You have fallen with Babylon, but it is not yet uh, too late. Why? Because Babylon is not yet fully given her wine of the fornication to all nations. She is about to give and she is still giving, but not yet all the wine of his for her fornication. There is time now for us to be like Daniel, like the servant of the Lord. And it, is not, it wasn't only Daniel. If you read chapter 11 from the book of Hebrews, you know, the book that we have studied last, uh, in the last quarter in the Sabbath school, the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11 is speaking about ordinary, usual men and women. And they were fighting the good fight. And they were conquerors through Christ. 
just because they have placed their full trust and they were fully believing that whatever is going on today in this chaotic life, in this chaotic world, God is in control. And uh, because of uh, God is in control, you can find your place in Babylon, in the hand of the mighty God. And this mighty God can be your leader. Believe me, he will not forsake you. He will not let you down. But he will be the one who is giving you his own strength. He will raise you from your ashes, if that's the case. And he is the one who is holding your hand strongly. Babylon is fallen because, because Babylon is not or wasn't faithful to God, to God's word. Babylon is going to fall soon, uh, although uh, Babylon is trying to, to just unite all the religions, all the nations, but uh, according to the Bible, to the word of God, in book of Daniel, chapter 2, they will not succeed. But they will try their own best just to unite religions in ecumeny. Uh, and the uh, ecumeny is saying that there is uh, good things in every religion. Let us not be bothered about those things that are separating us but let us just think about uh, those that are binding us together. Okay, my, my brethren, this is a, a very, um, very good thing to our ears, but if you just think about uh, what they are saying, they are saying that doesn't matter if there is the Bible that should unite us. And doesn't matter if people are not listening to the Bible, but there are some good things in it. I mean, in their own religion. Uh, we can still stick to those and be united. United in what? Babylon was united in false teachings. And Babylon, with all all those religions in the ecumeny are and will be united in the same false teaching, teachings and they are just not wanting to listen uh, to the full word of God. Where are we? Where are you, my brethren? Uh, when these expressions of the Bible are said, where are we? Where is your life? Is your life hidden in Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit? Because if it is a yes, I mean, if your answer is a yes, maybe today you are not fully equipped but you are trying today, from now on, to, to let the Holy Spirit to fully equip you and to make you a good, not a good servant, but a good child of God. Because God doesn't need servants. He would have all the universe. Why would he want uh, the wretched humanity the fallen and wretched humanity to be his servant. That's not my God. My God is saying it is not enough to be a servant, my servant. I want you to be my child. But to be his child, you have to be vigilant. You have to hide his spirit. You have to be prayerful, just like Daniel. 
He was studying the Bible, and he wasn't only studying the Bible, but he was uh, implementing, he was, he was putting in practice whatever he had uh, studied or read from the Bible. Uh, it became true through his life. Maybe you don't uh, recognize yourself in Daniel, but you know what? You don't have to. You have to put the word of God, the real word of God in your heart and through your heart, through your life, Jesus Christ, God, will be reflected. And maybe uh, Nabuchadnezzar will not be a Christian because of your influence, but so many other people can follow Christ because of your experience. Babylon, Babylon can fall because of its own false teachings. Babylon is giving something that is not coming from the Lord of hosts, from the Creator. This is what Babylon is uh, giving to all nations, equal with death. But what is God giving to you through his word, through Jesus Christ, through a prayerful life, an eternal prosperous life, an eternal prosperous life. But never forget that this uh, eternity begins here on earth and your eternal lives uh, can be or has to be have to be hid hidden in christ in christ because without him you cannot do anything nothing not nothing can exist without him uh, today in the morning we he learned uh, from the Sabbath school that he is the creator. And your creator knows your heart. And your creator knows that you are worried about Babylon. And your creator knows that you don't want to take part from the benefits of, uh, of, of Babylon. But... You want to be in Christ, with Christ, through the Holy Spirit. My brethren, uh, Jesus, through his Holy Spirit, is among us now, today. Not only because of uh, the uh, prayer and fasting Sabbath, just because of your heart, just because of your recognition that you are who you are and just because of you would want to be changed not in a human way but in the way of God uh, I, I, I can't say like Frank Sinatra was saying I do it my way that's a, a song but let's do it Christ's way, because that's the only way that, that can help us. And this is my prayer, my brethren, so that the Holy Spirit can fill our hearts and our lives, and with our uh, eyes we can see what is the right and the correct way to the eternity and to reach out to those uh, in Babylon, because there are so many people of God. They need you and me. Let's just pray. Let's just ask uh, the Lord of creation to just use us and touch those people's heart because God loves them uh, just like he loves you and me. God be praised. Amen. Amen.